Hi, Jeremy. Hey, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Good. Awesome. My earpods are not working. Oh, that's <laughs> Okay. Thank you for hopping on uh, the live show. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. So a little bit about this series. Um, it's a new series for real industry called Life's Not Linear, um, mm -hmm. where we're interviewing people who have navigated some difficult situations, whether it's like graduating in a recession, um, just like career changes and layoffs, and then now with this pandemic. And we're, we want to – interview awesome people who have a story to share or maybe just kind of like walk us through your journey and share a lesson um, and really just like get to know you. Awesome. So yeah. I'm the, excited to chat. <laughs> uh, I'm excited too. Um, the first question just is to kind of cue it up is where did you go to school and what did you study? So I went to undergrad at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, and I studied, eventually ended up studying music and political science. Um, there were a lot of majors in the interim there, kind of weaved back and forth. And I took six years, actually, to graduate from undergrad, went part-time because I was working part-time um, the last couple of years there, actually. And then I more recently... Um, Went to University of Cambridge in the UK and got an MBA there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, how was that uh, transition from undergrad to industry or undergrad to your uh, MBA? Um, it was... So the transition from undergrad was definitely not straightforward. Um, I had started out undergrad in politics thinking that, like, I was probably going to end up being um, in a, you know, a political job. So I was interested in politics. I thought that I would probably end up doing that for the most of my career. I was all set up to go to maybe go to um, Washington, D.C., work on the Hill. Um, and then I found that there was a little local record label in town um, called Ghostly International. Um, and I had always been involved in music. My brother was in a band um, playing all the way through college. Um, and I would sort of been in the sort of indie music scene. Um, but I got involved with them, ended up applying for an internship because, hey, that was cool. Maybe I'll okay. see if this works out. Um, that internship turned into eventually a part-time job, which actually paid less than all the um, part-time jobs at the uh, university. So I took pay cut to work in indie music, but it was worth it because um, I had a chance and ended up sort of investing time in that and refiguring out my career pathway through that. Um, and that uh, sort of led me to um, working for 14 years in the music industry, although I didn't really plan that as a career when I started out. Um, mm -hmm. ended up teaching myself a lot about what it meant to do music licensing sort of in an on the job fashion. Oh. Wow. And so then when did you get your MBA within those like 14 years? Um, so I left. Oops. Seems like it paused for a second. <laughs> uh, um, it, I left ghostly, um, after about 14 years and went to grad school. Um, I loved the experience, okay. was working full time there, loved it, um, but felt like I was up for a new challenge and had always wanted to go to business school, felt like it would have a lot of opportunities for me. I could go work in another part of the music industry, work for a bigger music company. Um, there, there were a lot of pathways um, there. Um, sort of in the meanwhile, I'd it started teaching at the University of Michigan because I graduated, mm -hmm. realized they didn't teach courses in all the stuff that I was interested in, um, or that would have been really helpful for my job. So I started, once they started doing that a little bit more at Michigan, I started teaching part-time in that, realized I really loved, loved it. And sort of along the way, had an idea that maybe if I want to do this in a full-time capacity, I should get a grad degree. Um, so I sort of walked into grad school saying, well, I could do this, or I could go this way, or I could go that way, or very not straightforward, um, with a lot of options and not necessarily knowing exactly what the uh, 
end goal might be. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was scary, but my wife and I talked about it and it was uh, ultimately decided to make more sense to do it than um, not do it. That, yeah, that makes sense. And it seems like there was a couple moments of your life where you're kind of like, well, we're just going to figure it out as we go. And like, I like to quote, build the plane as we fly it. So yeah, um, that's, <laughs> that's cool that you <laughs> that's a, a a common theme i guess in my life we mm -hmm. i started a record label during the middle of that 14 years with my brother and a friend um and we ended up releasing like um 40 50 different records oh, wow. but we yeah. were definitely building it as we were flying you know putting together the first record as you know we um were releasing it literally hand you know getting cds in a stack and mm -hmm. CD cases in a stack and shrink wrapping themselves or literally building the plane as it was oh, okay. supposed to be released or as the records need, uh, the bands mm -hmm. needed records. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that sort of, if you look in hindsight, it's like, oh yeah, my path from undergrad in music and political science to teaching at uh, Wayne State University looks really straightforward, but it totally was not the case. <laughs> Um, and so during these times where you were kind of just like, didn't have a lot of direction or had a lot of options, how did you handle that? Like what kind of like, like mentally or what kind of support system or what did you do to kind of like navigate this path from A to B? So um, there's a couple of things. I think I looked, um, looked out or re reached out to some peers in the, um, both in the music industry and um, in the higher ed sort of industry. Um, once I was brought in to do some guest lectures at Michigan, I got to know some of the faculty more and more and started talking with them about their pathway, about the things they wish they would have been able to experience before they got into academia, um, and about what some sort of possible pathways might be for me. Um, so as I was investigating this, you know, maybe over three or four or five years, this possibility of, you know, taking the big shift to be able to jump and say, no, I'm going to actually quit a job that's paying me really well um, and go kind of veer off in this corner. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to a lot of friends. I talked to a lot of those um, mentors who clearly love their job teaching. I kind of felt like I had that there, but I wanted to suss out mm -hmm. that, that whole thing. And I read a lot. Um, the internet is a wonderful research tool. Yeah. Um, and if you use your gut and you can parse and not take everything at its full worth, but parse that information that you can, I think, take a lot from the feedback of other people, um, you know, I got a lot of feedback even from people in the music industry who said, you know, you're very personable, you think you're relatable, and you seem to teach and explain things really well, um, which sort of was like, okay, yeah, that makes a little sense. Maybe I should consider this more as a pathway, but. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I want to go back to a point you said where you were like, I can leave this well-paying job and like veer off. Um, how did you handle that? Because that's pretty scary. Um, so we had some money saved up to pay the down payment. Took out mm -hmm. way too much in loans, um, yeah. which I'm going to pay off for the next, you know, 30 years <laughs> for grad school. Um, mm -hmm. Luckily, hopefully, they'll keep this public service loan forgiveness program going um so that might get forgiven after a little bit of while because i do teach at a public university so you work at a nonprofit or a um a public university and that program is available um for for federal federal loans but we did a you know oh. i always i guess lean towards spreadsheets and pro pros and cons lists and strengths you know swat charts strengths weaknesses opportunities threats um, and sort of tried to evaluate it in terms of, okay, what's, what benefits are possible? What are the, the negatives? What are the downsides? Um, 
is it possible to do this part-time and work part-time? Could I afford to do that? Uh, could we afford the program? Um, mm -hmm. I think it was a bit of luck, a bit of saving, a bit of jumping off the end of the dock, not knowing where the bottom is, you know, cashed out what at, at that time, that was all my retirement savings to put it towards grad school. That's definitely not um, maybe the best fiscal advice, um, <laughs> but it, what it did is enable me to take a year off of work and go and live in the UK and study um, in an MBA program that was focused on arts, media, um, and creative um, and cultural management. Um, there's a program like that at Cambridge. It was one of the reasons I applied to that program, wanted to go there and got to study with people who are experts in um, that field, which has turned out to be amazing in terms of academia, um, but just in terms of being able to really study in depth that information on top of everything else um, that we studied during the program. Um, it, turned, it turned out that that risk benefit um, or risk reward payoff was worth it. Um, but you're in that, you know, I think we paid the deposit the absolute last day I overnighted it uh -huh. I did it to the UK, which was not cheap, um, oh. just because we weren't sure if it made sense. And finally, we're like, got into Cambridge. It's a it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. You should take advantage of this. Yeah, and jumped. You know, that's awesome. And I guess I've tended to do that more often than not. You know, mm -hmm. saw a opportunity that seemed risky. You know, do I pass up the sort of solid career in DC in politics to work at an indie record label in the middle of the Midwest. Mm. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> my parents were supportive, but it, it yeah. was very well possible that they would not have been supportive of that decision. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, but the risk is worth the reward. A lot. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, one last question I like to ask in these interviews sure. is, um, what is a piece of advice that you would give yourself when you were going through these transitions that you would like to share with everybody else? Um, lean into your network, um, especially in this sort of situation we're all facing right mm -hmm. now. Um, and it, it, it could be, you know, talking with folks on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, that's one way of looking at it. Um, but if you have a network of peers, of mentors that you've um, interacted with, that could be, you know, for the students who interact on a day-to-day -day basis with real industry, that could be their professors or the folks that they've um, successfully interned with previously. Mm -hmm. um, I think that while it's really difficult for folks in sectors all over the place, we're also sort of... Um, craving that connection and hearing from somebody you haven't heard from uh, in a long time can be really nice. A friend of mine from high school actually just reached out um, over LinkedIn. I didn't know he was listening or uh, he was living as close as he was to where I live. Um, so it was really nice uh, to, it was kind of heartwarming to see that and mm -hmm. end up probably hearing about what he does in his career. And, you know, that may pay off not in the short term, um, mm -hmm. but, um, very, uh, very much longer in the long term. I think those um, relationships that you sort of invigorate um, and you create, not trying to look at them, you know, sort of linear fashion, like A to B, direct relation. What can this person get me in a month? Um, which tends to be um, something at least I've seen in um, a number of students. You have to sort of break up, break people out of that mold. I definitely needed to be broken out of that mold when I was. Um, a, when I was coming of age, we'll put it that way, um, in college. Um, but that um, sort of ability to um, really lean in and connect and consider the long term um, of what you investing in helping friends in this situation. We all might be overstressed and overworked, but if somebody reaches out and asks for help um, on a project, lean into it um, because... I think it's really important and it'll pay rewards um, over the long term. I, you might call it karma. I call it good networking, <laughs> good business acumen, or good business practice. But I feel like 
Um, even a, an example from my background, um, I worked in the indie record industry for a long time, um, and now I'm studying it academically. I'm, I know I can lean back into those contacts and ask them to mm -hmm. do um, interviews with me for research papers if I'm interested in how the indie label music community in America is organized or how uh, the music industry in Iceland works, for example. Um, those contacts that I made in my previous career uh, because I took care of them, I invested in them, was mm -hmm. friends with them, um, would help them in those times will pay off in the future. And you can definitely spend time doing that now, um, no matter kind of what the situation is. I agree. Long-winded response, but. <laughs> no, it was a good one. Um, thank you again for sharing your path with us and also sharing that piece of advice. I really yeah. appreciate it. And definitely we'll have to have you on again. Um, sure. I've Would love it. Short, but sweet. And so it's like maybe we could do a couple with like a series per person. We'll see. But thank you yeah, again. I'd be happy to have talk and like go drill down on academia <laughs> or music business or politics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> politics, whatever. <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> that sounds good. All right. All right. Thank you. Yep. See you. Thanks. Bye.